Dear friends, how are you doing? I'm Mark Golub. It's wonderful to be back with you. I hope you're all continuing to do well, that you're staying safe, following all the rules, which now include wearing some form of protective mask if you leave your home. And of course, gloves. By the way, they can be any form of gloves, as long as they're not porous. They don't have to be surgical gloves. And you can simply throw your gloves into the dryer when you return home. But I hope you leave home as little as possible. I also hope you had as wonderful a Passover holiday as possible under these current circumstances. I know that families were on Zoom for Seder night everywhere. And I hadn't even heard about Zoom a month ago. Anyway, if you had a Zoom Seder with your family, I hope it was really nice, that it was a form of connection to people you love, even if you couldn't be with them in person. The description members of my Chavarot gave repeatedly was bittersweet. Bittersweet Passover. Seems right, doesn't it? It was sweet and really wonderful that we have a technology that enables us to share moments together with people we can't be with physically. And there was something nice about seeing everyone, even people who might have not have come to our Seder physically because they live so far away, but they could join us from throughout the country or the world for that matter because it was online. But bitter because we weren't together in the same room. And it's more than the fact that we couldn't hug. Everybody talks about not hugging. It's more than that. Being in the same room for a Seder has an energy and a joy that's simply not possible on a monitor, a computer screen. And one thing Zoom does not make easy is singing together. I miss the singing together. I miss the harmony that I hear when I sit at our Passover table. I miss the cacophony of sound, conversation, laughter. Well, you don't have to be worrying about mute or unmute. But on balance, how lucky we are to have been able to share satyrs because of this technology. I also want to thank you for the overwhelming response of so many, many, many of you to our satyrs on JBS. You had wonderful things to say about Rabbi Mark Schneier's traditional seder on both the first and second nights. And I mean, what can I say about your emails to me in response to the JBS Family Seder, featuring so many of the wonderful people you see on JBS. So Joyce and Ellen and Adina and Jessica and Herb and Marcia and Linda and Jeff and David and Arlene and Carol and Peter and Barbara and Ed and Helen and Deborah and Barry and Art and Barbara and Elise... Your comments about the Seder, they touched my soul. I thank every one of you who took the time to email me. It meant the world, it means the world to me. You know, when you do television, you're speaking to a camera. You never know who's watching and whether it's meaningful in people's lives. So when you are in touch with me, know that you are not only affirming the work we do here at JBS, you're energizing. All, you're energizing me. You're energizing all of us at JBS. And Kolagvo de Dara for a fabulous editing job of the Family Seder. And my deepest thanks to the more than 20 friends of JBS 
who made time for me to be part of the JBS family Seder. And to answer those of you who are asking if you can receive a DVD of our Seders in return for a donation in support of JBS at this Passover season, the answer is yes. We are more than happy to send you the four-hour DVD of the JBS Family Seder to anyone who can support JBS with a tax-deductible gift of $180 or more, 10 times high. And for donations of $250 or more, we'll send you DVDs of both the JBS Family Seder and Rabbi Mark Schneier's traditional Seder. You can send your tax-deductible check to our Stamford, Connecticut P.O. Box. That's Box 360, Stamford, Connecticut, 06904. Or you can make your donation online at jbstv.org and clicking on the Donate button. And any support you can give JBS at this time, any support at this difficult time, when producing JBS is, I'm afraid, much more complicated. It will be most appreciated and is enormously important during this pandemic. And that brings me to COVID-19. As I'm sure many of you have seen, in the midst of all the bad news swirling around us, there are people posting very positive, creative pieces responding to the coronavirus and how they are experiencing it. And there's a wonderful video that I'd love you to see. It's the creation of a very talented musical theater major, also a directing major, currently in her senior year at Marymount Manhattan College. Her name is Sydney Weiser, and she's put together this fun video parody she calls Princess Fiona in the time of Corona. I'd like you to see it now. There's a student in a bedroom. Oh my gosh, that's just like me. College student needs her classes, but COVID won't set her free. She passes time by singing like someone else I know. As months go by, she sits and waits. As months go by, uh-oh, a torturous existence. I don't remember this part. She wishes she were dead. Skip ahead, skip ahead. But in the end, the student takes her class pass fail. The virus clears and we can. Wait and see, blah, 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 toilet paper, boring, boring, evil Trump, filler, filler, sanitizer, here comes economic slump, skip ahead, skip ahead. But in the end, the student wakes up from her nap. She gets back on the stage when there's an audience to clap. So I know they'll appear and the stage lights will be blinding. Shining as the sun when we go back outside. Smell a rose, chill with friends, and we'll stand close together. Not six feet apart, but side by side. Day number. Vaccine 
on a cure in seconds flat. Nobody likes quarantine. Look, I drew a carrot. Cut the masks and sanitizer. Cuts this pandemic. Cuts the peril and the pitfall. Cut from stupid rhetoric. Cut from old learning. Cut isolation. Cut the boredom. Cut cancellations. And the waiting, the waiting, the waiting, the waiting, the waiting. So no one will appear. Though I seem a bit desperate. Well, when all of this is over, it feels like long now. Wait patiently, day number. I feel dear God, please cure Corona. Please cure Corona. Princess Fiona in the Time of Corona by Sidney Weiser. Just very, very sweet. Well, lucky us, right now joining us on JBS is the creator of Princess Fiona, Sidney Weiser. Sidney, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me today. So first of all, Sidney, how in the world did this come about? How did you end up creating this video? Ever since I came home now two and a half weeks ago from college when our semester was moved completely remote um, and I was sitting at home for the days when before we got up and running remotely I, I just had the couple of lines the words the waiting the waiting the waiting the waiting which is towards the end of the song um, and then I realized that Fiona and Corona rhyme um, and so I had a lot of time on my hands for the first couple of days, and I just sat down for a fun activity. And Very nice. By the way, tell our audience, you're doing a parody to what song from what show? The song is I Know It's Today from Shrek the Musical by Janine Tesori. Did you write this yourself? I mean, since it is a parody, the melody is... Um, I understand. Yeah, um, but all of the lyrics for this adaptation... I wrote myself with a little bit of input from my mom and dad. <laughs> Very nice. By the way, in journalistic integrity, I am very close to your family. I was the rabbi as your mother grew up. I had the privilege of being the rabbi at her bat mitzvah, and I've been part of your family life forever, and I've been so proud of you and what you've been able to accomplish. Um, well... You play the guitar in the video. Mm -hmm. Who's playing the piano? That is a recording that I found on YouTube. Very good. Okay. <laughs> and I assume you're, you recorded and then you lip sync the video, correct? Yes. So who's doing the video camera work for you? My mother. We made a fun full day activity out of it. But wait, did it take a full day? Um, yeah, I sat down to write it after breakfast in the morning, and um, then I did the recording in, you know, around like 11 a.m., and then after lunch, we started filming. Very nice. Uh, what I find about it is that it is both comforting and optimistic. Is that 
you know, is that what you intended to do? When you were thinking of how you wanted to create a video, there seems to be a message here. It's a fun message, but there's also a profound message in it. Am I reading too much into it, Sydney, by saying I thought it was in some way comforting and optimistic? I think, at least for me in the experience of writing it, I found it cathartic to just say the things that are on my mind that classes are really strange to adapt to and that they're remote and I miss my peers. Um, and I always find that there's a lot of strength in just saying the things that are on our minds. And actually the original lyrics in the song go up to day number 8,523. And my parents said, please don't say that high of a number because that will just be disheartening. Um, so I made the last number 73 because that seemed more reasonable. To not, too, not too bad. But you constantly, there's a refrain that you have written where you talk about we've seen other plagues and they do end. They come to an end. And, in some, and then you go outside and you're in the sun and you're surrounded by these stuffed animals <laughs> and you're dancing and you're twirling. And I found that to be a very, you know, I, I'll use the word again, a very optimistic and uplifting message. And at first I wanted you to know that. That's how I think it comes across. Call like a vote to you. <laughs> but also I just wanted to know the extent to which you were aware of how it would be received and, and how it is for people, a very comforting, uplifting video. I'm very glad that people are having that experience with it. I, I didn't think that close to 2,000 people would be seeing it. I was making it originally just for my, my own comfort, um, but I, I've been raised in a pretty optimistic family and I'm, I'm quarantined with my parents and we're making a concerted effort to yes. Are you realistic. Really, is it at the moment in your home, is it only the three of you? Yes. Um, I came home from college um, in New York to here in Connecticut and both of my sisters are off in their homes in other states. Okay. Um, so it's me and my parents. Um, but we've been trying to be realistic. Yes. Sydney. But also keep ourselves doing things that make us happy and realizing that sooner or later things will get better. Absolutely. Sydney, I was anxious to talk to you also because you're the first person I've had on JBS of your age. How hard has this been on you? I am sure you're in contact either by phone or by some kind of uh, video connection with your friends. How, in general, how hard has it been on you and your friends and your generation? I mean, everybody is impacted by this somehow whether it be in their health or how their jobs are affected for us college students, it, it's incredibly disorienting a, to be back in the homes that we have kind of moved out of as we're starting our young adult lives. A lot of us, once we had to leave our dorms, went back to our parents' homes. Um, and some of my peers have better relationships with their family than others. And for some people they're back in home environments that don't really accept them for who they've become and who they are. Fortunately, yes. I'm in a, a, a wonderful, accepting family. Um, but yeah, I, I miss my friends very, very much. And thank goodness that we have the technology that we do have. Um, it's actually my best friend's 21st birthday today. So in a little while, we're going to be having a Zoom birthday party for him. What's his name? His name is Max. Um, okay. Max Perry. Well we wish Max Mazal Tov on his birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, Max. But I understand it, you miss people who are important to you. Very much so. Um, and I miss New York City. And as a, as a theater major, 
my, my classes don't translate as easily to Zoom as I think some other majors do because they're not really lecture based, they're performance based and collaboration based. Um, so we have to be very flexible with our syllabus now to try to find solutions um, so that I'm still getting the education that I went to college for. I understand. Are you studying online or it's not possible? Yes, um, I have my dance class every morning at 10 a.m. Um, where my professor plays the music through her computer and we all dance on Zoom. Um, and my other, yeah, most of my classes are happening on Zoom at the regularly scheduled times. Um, it's just sometimes a little slower as people have trouble with technology. Um, but we, we are making it, it work. Good. By the way, Sydney, I love the moment in your video when you light Shabbat candles. How <laughs> did that happen in this video? I am a person who is very much passionate about my Jewish identity. Um, and at school, there's not a large Jewish population at Marymount. And everybody knows that, like, I'm the Jewish girl. Um, <laughs> and I was actually, right before this all went down, I was directing a play about... Um, a, a orthodox couple struggling with um, sexuality and homosexuality. Um, so I, I bring Judaism into everything I do, and I turn to prayer when I am feeling at a loss. I understand. And ritual routine right now is one thing that everybody needs so much. And what is more routine and ritual than lighting our Shabbos candles. That's beautiful. By the way, how did you get involved with a play about sexuality and homosexuality in the Jewish community? Um, well, for, for my advanced directing class, I get to direct my own piece, and I just did a lot of reading, and I stumbled upon this wonderful play by John Narantz, A Strange and Separate People. Um, and... I, I am a Jewish person who has grappled with my own sexuality. And so I, I felt very, very drawn to this piece. And it is a conversation that is ongoing in the Orthodox community of how to um, accept Absolutely. things. And I've also taken a really wonderful class at um, NYU. I'm involved in their Jewish student life there through the Jewish Leadership Fellowship. Um, I took a class called Sex, Love, and Romance, which is all about how Judaism approaches this dialogue. And so we've spent time with, you know, those really challenging verses that, you know, Leviticus 19, everyone's aware of. Um, by the way, by any chance, have you seen any of the series Unorthodox? I just saw it come up on, um, like, my recommended things on, on Netflix. Okay, but you haven't seen it really yet. No, I have not. Okay. So here you are, a junior. By the way, you also make a reference, as hard as it is on you in the song, it's harder even for seniors. Do you have friends who are seniors and facing yes. this whole issue? Yes, I do. Um, my, my girlfriend is a senior, and I had to pack her up out of her dorm two months early. She had a makeshift graduation um, with her peers, which was really lovely. And yeah, I know as much as I'm grappling, I know that I'm going to come back and I'm going to have another year. Um, and I'm going to see the vast majority of my friends again, but they won't. Yes. So are you frightened at the moment? Are you frightened for yourself or for your family? Or do you feel that if you follow the rules and you stay in your home, you're pretty safe. I am privileged that I don't have to go anywhere now that I'm home. I'm not an essential worker. Um, my father is, and he's going into the office every day, and we scrub everything down when he leaves and when he comes back. And it does seem inevitable that people in this house are going to get sick, and people I care about are going to get sick. One of my professors um, is waiting on her test results to come back. 
I am not afraid for my own life because I know I am young um, and I have no major immunocompromised diseases or anything, but I know that it is my responsibility to stay in this house so that I do not, if I'm a carrier, pick it up and transmit it to other people. Um, and I am scared for what the economy is going to look like after this and how long we're in this for. Will I have a job for this summer? But lousy things have happened in human history. <laughs> um, and we as an entire world will get through this one way or another. Absolutely. So on the other side, Sydney, what are you hoping for and planning for in terms of your own career as you graduate college after the following year? You know, what are your dreams at the moment? I mean, I want to be a gainfully employed uh, theater, uh, theater professional. Um, right now, I'm still auditioning for summer stock theaters that are planning on going up for the summer. And... I, I mean, what, what theater major doesn't dream of being on the Broadway and, and I, I do go in for auditions now for regional productions and off-Broadway productions and Broadway productions. And I've been fortunate enough to receive callbacks for those. Um, so I'm feeling like I'm on the right track. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> By the way. You are an amazing talent, and it will not surprise me at all if one day I'm invited to some opening night and you're on stage, and what a thrill that will be for me. You did a very, you did a very kind thing. You and your mother, whoever helped you with this um, video, it will help people, and so you should take some real pride. It's a form of a mitzvah that you did. So kol kavod to you, kol tuva hatzlacha, only goodness and success for you, enormous success in whatever endeavor you're involved with. And I wish you good health. And if you ever knew, do another video, Sydney, then you've got to let me know and we'll share it with the JBS audience. And please, darling, send my love to everyone in your entire family. And again, I look forward to seeing all of you on the other side. Thank you, Sydney, very much. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me come and talk today. And I'm so glad that people have been finding the video a comfort and best of health to you and yours. Sydney Weiser. Here now are the rough current coronavirus numbers for April 13th. And on a sad note, among those who have been taken from us as a result of the coronavirus is Rabbi Bakshi Daron, the former Sephardic chief rabbi of Israel, who passed away after five days at Shari Tzedek Hospital in Jerusalem. Rabbi Bakshi Daron, who was revered as a great Jewish scholar and a guide to many in the state of Israel, was 79 years old. And a reminder, if you have a simcha, or if there's someone who's ill and you'd like that person mentioned on a Misha Berach list, or if there's a person you'd like mentioned who's passed away, please feel free to email me all the information to our special email address we've set up at jbscommunity at jbstv.org. And to be in touch with me, email me at rabbigolub at jbstv.org. I'm Mark Golub. Stay safe and be well, my friends. <laughs>